This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, horror, and sci-fi film called Men. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. One afternoon, Harper stares blankly at the balcony with a bloody nose. She then closes the balcony door when suddenly she sees her husband, James, falling. Days after, Harper drives alone to a small village in the countryside. She arrives at an old manor with an apple tree in the garden. Relishing the peacefulness, Harper plucks one fruit and eats it as she heads to the front door. The owner, Joffrey, greets her and invites her inside. Immediately, Harper compliments the house, so Joffrey recounts that parts of it are nearly 500 years old. He offers to bring her bags in and despite Harper insisting on helping, he refuses to and tells her to make herself some tea. Harper heads to the kitchen to boil some water. While waiting, she hears Joffrey struggling with her bags, so again she offers to help but he refuses. After settling her bags, Joffrey jokes that he wished he had accepted her help. Still, he comments that she needs all her belongings since she'll be renting the manor for two weeks. He then notices her half-eaten apple and stresses that the apples are forbidden fruit. Harper starts apologizing but Joffrey chuckles since he was just joking. Instead, he encourages her to eat them since the apples just fall to the ground and spoil, which attracts wasps. Joffrey then gives her a tour of the manor. When they reach the master bedroom, Harper notices the view of the church spires. So Joffrey shares that they're near the village where there's a good pub. He then asks if she'll be staying alone, which he confirms. Confused, he asks where her husband is, noting how she booked the manor as Mrs. Marlowe. Harper explains that she hasn't updated her name yet, and Joffrey awkwardly drops the topic. After the tour, Joffrey hands her the only keys to the manor, though he comments that she doesn't need to lock the door since the area is safe. He then heads out, reminding her that he lives down the lane if she needs help. Finally alone, Harper calls her friend Riley to share her doubts about splurging on renting a manor. Harper adds that Joffrey asked about her husband, but she implied that they had divorced. Riley's tone gets serious, but Harper waves off her worries, promising that she's just gonna have to get used to the questions. Suddenly, the video call starts glitching, momentarily showing a screaming face. Riley doesn't notice this, so Harper just convinces herself that the signal was temporarily cut off. Harper then arranges her clothes in the bedroom, but recalls her last conversation with James. Harper wanted a divorce, but James insisted that she didn't like the man he'd been over the last year. Still grasping at hope, James asked what he needed to fix, but Harper begged him to stop making excuses. As a last resort, James threatened to kill himself, surprising Harper. He stressed that he'd do it so she'd have to live with the guilt, and when she begged him again to stop, James yelled at her for pleading when he was the one pleading for their marriage. Suddenly, she snapped, screaming that she had her own life and he was tearing her apart with his threats. She argued that his threat was exactly why they needed to separate. With her voice breaking, she insisted on continuing the divorce because she couldn't live this way. Thinking of this, Harper finds herself in tears. To clear her mind, Harper takes a walk into the woods but finds the trail leading down a muddy slope. With no choice, Harper climbs down the slope and continues. When it rains, Harper takes shelter under a tree, relishing the slice of peace. After the rain, Harper finds a dark tunnel. Before entering, she calls out and listens to her voice echoing. While entering the tunnel, Harper sings, triggering the echo again. She laughs as she makes more sounds, making the echo sound like overlapping tones. She stops when she sees someone approaching from the other side of the tunnel. The person makes a hoarse scream before running inside, so Harper leaves. Scared, she rushes back to the trail but misses the slope where she climbed. She hears the scream again, so she runs until she reaches a dead end. With no other options, Harper climbs the slope on the side and tries to find her way back. She reaches abandoned looking houses and circles around them to an open field. Finally, she finds herself in a peaceful area, so she chuckles at how scared she was earlier. She then takes her phone to take a picture of the abandoned house, only to see an unclothed man watching her. Frightened, Harper leaves. That evening, Harper recalls finding James' body outside their home. His left hand had been impaled on the fence while his right leg was broken. The next morning, while on a call with a co-worker, Harper doesn't notice when the strange man approaches from the garden. While Harper pours herself a cup of tea, the strange man reaches the glass door. His reflection reveals a scarred face, resembling Joffrey. He moves away when Harper returns to the table. After the call with her co-worker, Harper answers a video call from Riley, who's hoping to get a tour of the manor. Harper shows her around, then moves to the piano room, where she shows her the view outside. Finally, Harper notices the strange man picking apples from the tree. Frightened, Harper drops Riley's call and calls the police, but the man suddenly disappears. Harper checks around and notices the front door ajar. When it moves, Harper quickly slams it shut and locks it, telling the operator on the phone that the man is trying to get inside. The man reaches into the mailbox, so Harper moves away while the operator assures her that the police are on their way. The horrifying situation reminds Harper of her fight with James. After their argument, James started thrashing the bedroom, so Harper texted Riley for help. 
Seeing this, James snatched her phone to read her message. He criticized her for making herself look like the victim when he was the one who was scared. Suspicious, James wanted to see her other messages, but the phone was already locked, so he demanded she unlock it. When she refused, he punched her. At the manor, the police soon arrive and apprehend the strange man, though one of the officers looks like Joffrey as well. Later, the female officer takes Harper's statement, so she shares that the strange man followed her from the woods. Seeing her worried look, the officer assures her that the man was harmless since he didn't even resist during the arrest. Afterward, Harper recounts the events to Riley. Riley offers to join her to be safe, but Harper refuses, assuring her that it's over because the strange man was arrested. Later, Harper walks to the church but finds it empty. She approaches the altar and finds a stone carving of the green man, an ancient being that represents rebirth. Behind it is a Sheila Naji carving, depicting a female figure opening herself. Harper then sits on one of the pews, thinking of how she reacted to James punching her. Coldly, Harper called the act his way of winning her back. James tried to apologize, but Harper pushed him out of the house, screaming in his face for trying to apologize after he threatened her. Enraged, Harper declared that she never wanted to see him again, no matter what he did or said. The same rage fills Harper at the church, so she lets out a scream. As she quietly sobs, a vicar notices her but leaves her alone. Harper soon heads out but stops when she spots a young man wearing a mask. When he removes his mask, he again resembles Joffrey. The young man asks to play hide and seek, but Harper declines, making him angry. The vicar approaches, and Harper sees that he resembles Joffrey as well. The vicar calls the young man Samuel and asks him to leave Harper alone. Pissed, Samuel puts his mask back on and leaves. The vicar apologizes for Samuel's behavior, then brings up that he saw her crying at the church. She soon shares how she wanted to divorce her husband, so he hit her. She admitted to getting angry, so she threw him out. Later, she learned that James forced his way into the loft above their home, hoping to climb down from the balcony to theirs, but he slipped and fell, though he might have let go on purpose. The vicar sympathizes with her, placing his hand on her leg. He notes that she's haunted by the guilt, and of wondering what could have happened instead if she'd made a different choice. When she agrees, he removes his hand from her leg, then sits back. Suddenly, the vicar asks why she made James do it. Harper clarifies that she didn't, so the vicar asks if she let James apologize for hitting her. Harper didn't, so the vicar explains that it's normal for men to strike women occasionally, but if Harper accepted James' apology, he'd still be alive. Offended, Harper walks away. Elsewhere, the strange man carves a wound on his forehead and places a leaf inside. That evening, Harper heads to the pub and finds Joffrey there. He offers to pay for her drink, but she refuses. Still, he asks the bartender to put it on his tab, so she thanks him. Soon, the officer who looks like Joffrey walks in to order a drink. He checks in on Harper, then mentions the strange man to Joffrey. Joffrey apologizes for the events, but Harper is just glad that the man was apprehended. However, the officer shares that they released him earlier because they couldn't charge him with anything other than taking an apple. Harper insists that the man stalked her since she saw him before, but the officer doesn't think it qualifies as stalking. Still, Harper stresses that he tried to break in, but the officer merely advises her to call if he appears again. Pissed, Harper walks out. Walking alone, Harper pauses when she hears a distant scream. Tearfully, she starts running, unaware that the strange man is watching her again. When she returns to the manor, she calls Riley and rants about Samuel, the vicar, and the officer. Tired of all the events, Harper decides to go home but Riley insists that she stay so she can heal. She then declares that she'll drive to the manor immediately so she and Harper can have a good time. Harper agrees, but while she gives her the directions, the call glitches again and drops. Suddenly, the porch lights shine momentarily, but before Harper can react, Riley texts her, instructing her to send her location via message instead. Harper does so, but receives an odd threatening reply. The porch lights shine brightly again, bringing Harper's attention to the window where she sees the officer outside. She heads out and asks what's happening, but the officer remains silent. Suddenly, the lights go out, and when she checks, the man has disappeared. All the apples from the tree fall at once, and a man from the pub races towards Harper, so she heads back in and locks the door. Terrified, Harper hides as she grabs a knife from the kitchen, just before the lights go out. Moments later, something bangs on the window until the glass breaks, forcing Harper to rush out. Someone starts rattling the front door, only for Joffrey to walk in. Harper tells him that someone was trying to break in, so Joffrey heads to the kitchen, switching the lights back on. However, they only discover an injured crow, which he puts out of its misery. As Joffrey tries to fix things, Harper is frozen, trying to make sense of what happened. She shares that the officer was outside earlier, so Joffrey offers to clear things up. When he steps out, the lights go out. However, it turns back on when he raises his arms, triggering the light's motion sensor. Harper follows him into the garden where he calls out to whoever might be out there. 
Getting no response, Joffrey assures Harper that the intruder is gone. However, the lights go out again. When the lights come back on, Harper finds herself face to face with a strange man. Cautiously, Harper steps back, seeing how the strange man has carved wounds into his skin where leaves sprout out from. The man then blows dandelion seeds at her, putting her into a trance where she sees visions of herself screaming and of the green man and the Sheila Naji. Despite this, Harper manages to walk back into the manor and close the door. The man then reaches his arm in from the mail slot, offering his hand. Harper takes his hand, but he grabs her tightly, snapping her out of the trance. Harper stabs his arm and the man forces his hand back out, slicing his arm further until the knife clatters to the floor. She takes the bloody knife but hears something moving inside the house. In the kitchen, she finds Samuel playing with the dead crow's body, having placed this mask on it. He tells her that she hurt him, showing his mangled left arm that split into two. He calls her mean for not playing hide and seek with him but claims that she'd have to play now. Samuel approaches Harper but she can't bring herself to harm the younger boy. Instead, Harper just backs away and closes the door on him. Still, Samuel takes this as a game and starts counting to ten. Harper counts along and when she reaches 10, the front door slams open, revealing another pub patron rushing towards her with the same mangled arm. Harper runs until she reaches the bathroom and closes it. With everything silent, Harper backs away, watching the door. Someone opens it and the vicar appears, also bearing the same mangled arm. He washes the blood from his arm and Harper asks what he is. The vicar answers that he is a swan, then asks when she had her first intimate experience. He admits to picturing her opening her body to him and laments at his attraction to her, declaring that it's her power that controls him. The vicar then approaches her and grabs at her skirt. Frozen in fear, Harper watches as he kneels before her until she finds the courage to raise her knife to his chin. Undeterred, the vicar towers over her and grabs her throat between his mangled arms. He chokes her against the mirror but Harper's cries die down and the vicar moans. Between them, Harper has buried the knife into his stomach. She kicks his body off of her and rushes out of the house. She reaches her car and drives away only to run over Joffrey. She stops the car in horror and watches him get up on his own. Joffrey approaches the car and taking advantage of her confusion, drags her out of the car. With Harper on the road, Joffrey takes her car and drives away. Moments later, Joffrey drives the car back and chases after Harper, forcing her to run back to the manor until he crashes the car. Tired, Harper collapses in the garden, sobbing. As she does, the strange man enters with his face covered in greens and branches. When he walks, his right ankle breaks. The strange man turns his body, revealing to Harper a pregnant belly. The strange man screams as a bloody Samuel crawls out of his body, also bearing a pregnant belly. Harper watches in horror as Samuel collapses and the vicar climbs out of his body. Seeing this, Harper turns away in cold disgust. She heads back inside the manor while the vicar follows. His belly rapidly grows and something climbs out from his back. Harper watches the events quietly as Joffrey collapses on the floor. Joffrey approaches Harper, slipping as he does. Harper backs away into the living room and grabs an axe from the fireplace while two feet stretch out from Joffrey's mouth. Joffrey collapses and Harper waits for the next man. To her surprise, James walks in. He sits on the couch and Harper joins him. James recounts how he died and blames her for it. Harper asks what he wants from her so he answers that it's her love. Harper sighs in response and picks at the axe's edge in deep thought. The next morning, a pregnant Riley arrives at the manor and finds the wrecked car and bloody trail. Fortunately, she finds Harper alive and seemingly more at peace with herself in the garden. Despite convincing herself that James's death wasn't her fault, Harper still carried the guilt as he predicted. She took an excursion to be alone, only to find herself surrounded by men who, like her husband, blamed her for their desires. Each man she encountered, including the strange entity, bore the same face because they all presented the same danger. However, in the end, Harper understands that her husband only wanted the idea of her love, but not her as a person. This allowed Harper to accept that James's death was never in her control, much like the other men's demands over her. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.